What's up everybody, Steven here. I just wanted to update you on my fish room build. I made a video a while ago saying that I had planned on doing one. Um, and I was going to record the process of that, but quite honestly, I just got so busy with work and I adopted a little puppy and I didn't really get a chance to film building the fish room. I am, I would say, 90% done with the first stage of you want to call it a first stage basically it's up and running I got some final touches to do and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the fish room and also my other tanks that I have um, out in my living room I changed everything from fake plants to live plants I picked up some new fish and we'll go ahead and show you what all I have going on this tank right here originally had a barb in it um, it has some fake plants on um, this rock structure over here. I made from scratch using foam and cement and I decided to repurpose the barb. The barb is becoming uh, sick. It's quite old. Um, so I put him in a quarantine tank by himself um, and I'm treating him for what looks like fin rot. Um, and I went ahead and picked up a pair of if you can see them, of Tequila Sunrise Guppies. And they're doing quite well in this tank. I replaced all the artificial plants with live plants. Um, everything melted back and is now coming, you know, regrowing. The Java Fern is still kind of melting and uh, I'm coming back. It's already sprouting new growth off the end of the rhizome. I don't know if you can see that. Um, there's a bunch of nearite snails in here. They're all zebras. I will eventually try to do a breeding tank. They don't breed in fresh water, so it will have to be a brackish setup to try to get the eggs to hatch. Um, they're excellent at cleaning algae from the tank, so I'd like to get into breeding those to help other people out. Here's the the guppies, and they're they're loving this tank. Now up here I'm doing a sweet potato plant. Um, basically I just removed one of the panels from the lid system that's on this flu ball and replaced it with um, the plexiglass do-it-yourself lids. And then I just used a jigsaw and cut a hole in it, stuck the potato in. And that was just maybe three days ago. So I'm waiting for it to root in. Eventually it'll fully root and it'll start taking over this side of the tank. And that will make great hiding spots for some guppy fry. So that way I don't have to worry about pulling the fry out and parents messing with them. This is my 75 gallon tank. It's got two electric blue cars in it and two blue polar convicts. Um, they get along perfectly well with each other. I never see them chase each other. They feed together. Um, absolutely no issues at all. Um, and they just look great together. The tank is uh, my first display tank. I originally made this wall. This is also custom done I did. It's foam board with cement on it and it has a, um, a sand waterfall feature that is not currently running. The tank also has neurite snails in it. I put some pots in there recently just to give the fish somewhere to hide. Um, and they don't really like it at all. They don't, I don't ever see them go in there. So I'll probably um, make them more into caves where you flip them upright and put a hole in the side to see if they'll start using it. Um, but it, they seem to be way more active now that I have live plants. They've uprooted a couple. As you see, they're floating. I need to replant them. It is a sand substrate, so um, the plants don't get a super good grip on um, rooting. Um, I am not dosing this tank in any way. Um, no fertilizers, no CO2. And everything is just doing great. Um, I'm using Nikru LED lights on top, just off Amazon. Uh, two separate ones. Um, one's the original Classic and one's the Classic Plus. And the Classic Plus is the way to go. It's way brighter and they're not that expensive at all.
So on the guppy tank, I am dosing CO2. This is a homemade setup. Um, there's videos online on how to do this. I got this from Joey the Do-It-Yourself King on his channel. Um, using the eBay kit and two pop bottles. One, basically one bottle has water and baking soda. The other has water and citric acid. The acid basically comes from this bottle, feeds into this one, creates a CO2, and then it goes up through a needle valve. I have a eBay bubble checker on it. It goes into a check valve. Um, comes in through the back filter down into a diffuser. All this parts are the cheap ones that you can get on eBay or Amazon. And I also have a CO2 um, checker that I also got off Amazon. And I'm just supplementing. I'm not pumping a ton of CO2 into it. I am only doing it during the day when the light is on. Um, I turn it off at night. And my use so far is I get about a week and a half out of it and then I have to make a new mixture. Um, it's super cheap. It's dollars to um, refill it. And um, eventually I'll go to a pink bowl tank or a five pound tank. But to start with, to dabble, it worked well. Um, the plants are responding very well. Um, these melted back not that long ago and they're, they're coming back with a quickness. So it, it is working. Um, I like to see the Java fern get to be a little bit more healthier looking, but it is sprouting um, new growth, so that's also good. And I just have them glued to PVC pipe. I didn't have any rocks sitting around and it seems to be working fine. Um, I got some Anubias also glued to PVC pipe that is growing and um, it's looking good so far. The water is definitely staying nice and clear. Um, the water changes on this are easy. It's the Fluval system that has the drain pipe. It comes out here and then you just open the valve and it drains water out. I only change water on this tank um, maybe once a week and I just do one bucket worth and um, it's just doing really really well. I highly highly recommend getting live plants for your tank. All right, now that you've seen some of my main tanks, I'm not going to get into my um, saltwater tank right now. It's doing fine. I haven't had any casualties. My red-legged hermit crabs are doing great. My watchman gobies doing great. My clownfish are doing great. And I did add one of my freshwater nearite snails to it. Um, I actually added two. One did not make it. The other one's doing great. I'm working on converting freshwater neurites to saltwater so that way they can breed and the eggs will um, hatch and then I'll have more neurites. And then basically just doing a project testing if I can convert them to saltwater, let them breed, and then convert them back to freshwater um, to use in my other tanks. And so far the project is um, one for two. So. I'll just leave that at that. That's gonna be a whole nother video if I get it to work. Um, and unless I test it and try it, I'll, I won't know if it works or not. So we'll see how it turns out. And let's go ahead and go into the fish room. All right, we're in the lodger room. I apologize, it's a mess. I've been building piping and racks and plumbing and it's just, I got tools everywhere and stuff's a mess. So I'll just go ahead and get that out of the way. On my dryer, I got PVC fittings, my drill, um, PVC cutters, all that stuff. And let's show you what I've come up with so far. And like I said, it is a mess, so be prepared. 
All right, here's the rack system that I have so far. Um, I am going to eventually go down the length of the room uh, once I get the rest of my storage stuff out of here and continue on. Uh, this is where I'm at. I just did the aquarium co-op video where you use the center blocks with 2x4s and I have two 20 gallon long tanks on the bottom and three gallon, I'm sorry, three 10 gallon tanks on the top. Originally I was going to put tanks up there and decided I was going to use that for my water storage. Over here I just have some self-adhesive hooks I got from the dollar store just to hang up some items. Um, filter wrench for my water filtration system, a small net, some airline tubing, and I got more of those hooks so I can add on. This is my quarantine tank. This is the barb that is not doing so well. Um, right now he's in a salt water bath. I'm going to do that for a week to see what's going on. It's definitely helping him, but he's in bad shape. So if the salt water doesn't do what I need it to do, then I will go through the, the trio of medications and try to get this guy back and healthy. But he is getting quite old, so I don't know if it's just getting towards the end of his life, but he, he's been battling infections um, for a while now, um, on and off. So I'm doing what I can to help him, but we'll see what happens. Um, thermometer, digital, just to see the temp of the room. The temperature is 77 degrees. Um, Aquarium Co-op Easy Green, because um, I am dosing tanks out here that have live plants. Bought these little labels, they peel right off so they don't leave residue. Um, and I just write what's in the tank and where and when I bought them, just so I can keep track of everything. This tank is getting pretty covered with algae. I had planned on putting neurites in here and came across some Indian dwarf puffers. There are three in here. There's two right there. And they're doing really well. They are currently um, eating on live brine shrimp and pest snails. I dump in just a little bit of brine uh, shrimp each night and that's their main staple right now and then as the pest snails in my shrimp tank um, get a little out of control, I put those in here. And they love the snails. So all my tanks out here are running matten filters. All five tanks are. Um, I got those from Flip Aquatics and they're doing good. I like them. Um, they take up quite a bit of room in the tanks so I have them, at least on the 10 gallons, I have them angled. So the front of the sponge filter is sitting right up against the edge of the tank and then the back is off and each tank is drilled with bulkheads with overflows. So the water level is always the same um, on my auto top off system. Well, it's a half auto top off. I still have to turn it on, but it will automatically maintain a water level. And I try to do 10% um, water changes a day. Um, on the quarantine tank, I'm doing 50% water changes right now. Um, and then because it is salted, I have my refractometer for the salinity for my salt water tank. I use that to make sure I keep the salt level correct in this tank after changing water. Um, in this tank I have S Repens and some swords and a jungle valve. This tank is currently empty. I just put that uh, S Repens in there um, yesterday and this is planned to be a secondary shrimp tank. Once my main tank starts breeding, I can selectively uh, call out the shrimp and put my higher quality ones in here and then let those breed so that way I can start a good line. At least that's my plan. This top rack currently just has LED grow lights. Um, this is just a clamp system. I'm waiting 
on a four foot LED aquarium light to come that's going to hang and light up all three tanks. This was what I had laying around so that's what I used and it's obviously working really well and I might have to play with the timer setting on that and as far as the timer setting I have this whole fish room on smart outlets so everything controlled in this room um, is on a smart outlet so I can control it with my phone um, I use the app which allows me to set certain schedules so the lights come on at a certain time each day they turn off at a certain time and then if I want to manually turn them on or off I can do that with my phone so it works out perfect So this tank, this 20 gallon long, which doesn't look like much, it has ghost shrimp in there, which will be nearly impossible to catch on camera with the glare. And then I have some four albino bristle nose plecos, and they hide during the day. There's a couple. Oh, he popped out a little bit. And there's four in here. I picked them up from the local swap meet. And those are just my homemade PVC caves and some manzanita driftwood branches. Also running a mountain filter. I have a heater in here and it's just a backup in case something were to fail. Um, I had that originally when I set up the room. I no longer really need it, but I just went ahead and left it in there. Now this tank has come a long way. This is the red cherry shrimp tank. It has the jungle valve and there is um, two java ferns in there. This one over here is doing really well. It's sprouting new growth. And it's hard to see, but there's one back behind the rocks. This is just lava rock. Um, I bought from Menards. You get a big bag of it. In fact, there's still a ton left in there. And there's 20, I believe 26 red cherry shrimp in here. They are from Flip Aquatics. There's duckweed growing on the top. You see those little white specks? Those are pest snails. On some of my jungle valve, they must have been eggs because I didn't see any snails when I planted this tank. And then, you know, a week later, there's some larger ones, and then I saw them drop eggs onto the glass, but I went ahead and left the eggs because I had planned on getting the Indian Dwarf Puffer, so I knew that would be a good food source for them. So all of these white specks you're seeing are either snails and or eggs. But the shrimp love the matted filters. They love grazing on them. And there is some um, chala wood in there. Hard to see, I'm sorry, the glass is pretty dirty. Okay, my lids are the custom double wall greenhouse lids. There's various videos online that you can see how to make them. I bought a four foot by eight foot sheet and I've done the five lids in here. I have an extra lid right there I made at the same time and I probably have over probably around half the sheet left I mean it's just great don't buy glass honestly because you can just make these if you're doing a fish room it's way cheaper and what's nice is you can customize them to however you want so I purposely cut it short um, it covers the mountain filter but what this allows me to do is slide it open to drop food in and then I can slide it shut and then in the corner, I have, 
sorry. In the corner I have a little hole cut so I can drop my water line in whenever I do my dosing and it just sits there. I pull them out when I'm done just so I can make sure that everything's off and I'm not continuously running water. So that's why they are all sitting out. And on this, I have another Nikru uh, Classic Plus LED. I have a second one to go right there to replace this little guy that is all I had at the time. Um, so probably after this video, I will install the next light above the Pleco tank. So let's go ahead and show you how I'm running my water change system. All right, so that's my cold water tap for my washing machine. I put a all metal Y valve on it, which I highly recommend getting all metal because I originally bought, it's actually here in the trash, a plastic one. And this worked except for it was leaking just a little bit and as I tightened down the hose, this metal started turning in this plastic and then caused a leak in the actual housing itself. So this would work perfect for its intended use, intended use of being outside using garden hoses, but in my fish room, it just wasn't strong enough. So I picked up this old metal one. So the wire comes into my laundry room, one line splits my washer, the other one splits to this three quarter inch hose. The hose goes up comes to this fitting where I have it transitioning into three quarter inch PVC pipe. This pipe runs along the wall. Up over the door. And into my filter system. These filter systems I picked up each canister for 10 bucks on Amazon. They don't come with filters but it comes with the assembly and the mounting brackets. The filters are fairly cheap. I have a sediment filter, which I don't really need. If I was on maybe well water, I would use it. But I just stuck it in there as a pre-filter. And then I have a carbon filter. The carbon filter is what's taking the chlorine out of my water. So when I flip this, the lever on the wall, the water starts flowing through. And then comes and goes into my 55 gallon barrel. So on this side, the filter's over there, comes in, I have a valve there just to be able to turn it off if I want to. Comes in and just basically dumps it into the barrel. You can see the water line, it's right here. And the reason I'm doing this is I don't want to use hot water to bring the temperature of the water up. Because right now, being in the winter, the water is actually coming out of the faucet at like 44 degrees. It's too cold to put into the aquariums. So I'm using this barrel system to basically heat the water up off of the room temperature to match the tanks. So if I drain this barrel all the way down and then I fill it up, I have to let it sit for at least a day. Typically it's two days before it's room temp. Um, to speed up that process, I have a couple hundred watt heaters just sitting in there that I can plug in to help speed up the process. And then I have a digital temp gauge. So you can see the water temp is 78, um, so it's matching the room. So that's how I get water to my tanks, or at least store it. And right now I am treating it with tap water conditioner just until I get that filter cycle, that, that carbon filter. Um, I don't know if it's effective immediately or if it takes you know a few gallons. This is the first barrel fill using the filter. Before, I was just sticking a garden hose in there, filling up and adding the conditioner. So I will still treat it um, because I'm using the API tap water conditioner. It's super cheap and I'm just using it as a precautionary thing to do. I picked up the barrel off of Craigslist. It was used originally to store grape juice at a winery. Um, I went ahead and cleaned it out really well ran a ton of water through it and been using it now for over a month without any issues. I basically drilled the bottom and put a bulkhead in it. It's the one of the same bulkheads I use for the tanks. It comes out of the tank into a ball valve that can turn the water supply off. And then I have a 
a union so I can take the drum off of the rack if I need to. That just unscrews so that way the drum is separate from the rest of the hard piping. And then it splits. One pipe runs to this end, the one pipe runs to that end. So I drilled the pipe, tapped it, and installed 8th inch MPT to 8th inch barb fittings. I did wrap it with Teflon tape and I didn't have any leaks on any of the fittings. I know a lot of people will install their actual regulating valves at the pipe. Um, I just did it this way um, just because it was easier for me. The line runs down and then I just have some extra of these airline tubing valves and what that allows me to do is I can control the drip rate. So I can either set the tanks to drip or I can just open it full to do a, a larger water change. And then I just pull it out of the holes and I set them on top so that way I'm not continuously dripping. I can see if there's any water leaks. So on the back side, so this is where the drum comes in and splits to each side. This end, I just put a ball valve. So if I want to take straight water, I can just open that up and have a bucket right here. If I need to um, take water into the house to the other tanks. And then the line comes over and then drops down. There I have another ball valve and that jumps. There I have another ball valve and that dumps straight down into my discharge bucket. What that allows me to do is if I ever need to drain my drum, I just flip open that valve and everything in the system will drain out. That pipe also comes back across the middle row to this end. I have another bowl valve so I can either drain out the pipe or fill up a bucket if I need to. And then these are also drilled and tapped to feed the lower tanks. Now since each tank is drilled and tapped with bulkheads, as you can see here, the water level is auto set by the bulkhead itself. So the bulkhead goes in and there's a 90 degree pipe that goes up and then the height of that pipe sets the water line. I basically have the water line on every tank set to the middle of the black bar so that way you don't see the water line from the front of the tank. The water will overflow whenever I do a water change goes down. I use clear piping just so that way I can track the water flow and it's super easy to plumb it down into the drain pipe. So it goes down into this larger drain pipe. I have it set on, this is just paracord I have laying around. Um, it's just going up to a, a screw and a piece of wood and that allowed me to fine adjust my pitch so that way I have a, a good drain angle. And there's T's for every tank. Um, there's a couple that are shared, so I shouldn't say every tank. There's four T's, there's five tanks. So this one is shared. So on this tank, because it was close to the top of my drain line, it just literally 90s right into the drain pipe. So that's just a 90 degree fitting, it dumps straight down. The tank from above, this is just zip tied to keep the um, tube from popping out and they just sit there so there's no possibility of somehow creating a siphon. And then this all travels down and then dumps into that bucket. That bucket has a water pump that's on a smart switch that whenever I do water changes I'm here for them. That's why it's not fully automated yet. It's semi-automated. I flip the water change system on and then when that bucket fills up, I press a button on my phone, it turns that pump on, and it goes through this tube into my washer drain. That will get hard plumbed. I still have the plumbing to do. It's gonna follow this pipe. So it's a little bit neater. And then I gotta get a Y for this discharge tube. So that way I can have my washer drain, which is that corrugated line you see, and the fish drain going into that. So here's the bucket drain. It's basically a sump pump. So 
So the pipe you're seeing on the right with the 45 degree, that's the drain from the actual tanks. And then this pipe is the full system drain, so if I need to drain the drum, it just dumps into this bucket. When that bucket gets almost full, I flip the pump on with my phone. And it will drain that bucket quicker than it will fill up, which is good. And it drains it out. Once it's empty, I turn it off. And I have to do that about every... If all, if all five tanks are water changing at full flow, I'll have to kick that bucket on every 10 to 15 minutes. Now, a safety precaution, which I have used twice already, so I'm glad I did it, is on the floor, this round guy is a water leak detector. I have a ring brand alarm system on my house with the ring cameras for like the door and the driveway. Well, they sell that, it's a freeze flood detector and it's just paired to the alarm system that if it detects water, it alerts my phone. Uh, just a few nights ago, I came home, I flipped on the water change and I got sidetracked with the new puppy and then my phone alerted me saying that there was a water leak. Came in here, the bucket overflowed and the water hit the sensor and then the water started going down the floor. The floor slightly slopes that way and then it slopes into my garage so worst case is the water goes out to the garage but I still don't want water in here at all on the floor so I was able to come in here flip the pump on and soak up the water so highly recommend some sort of alarm I know you can get water alert alarms on Amazon I've seen people make just um, siren alarms, not ones that will alert your phone, but a siren using old smoke detectors. So there's a lot of things you can do, but I highly recommend getting a water detector for your fish room. I've used it twice so far. So I want to talk about temperature. So I knew I was going to eventually have a bunch of tanks in this room. Right now I only have five. I plan on doing more. Um, basically once the Petco dollar gallon sale comes back around I'll pick up more tanks but I knew once I had a bunch of tanks it wouldn't be efficient to have a heater in every single tank so I decided to heat this room and the way I'm doing that is I just have a space here so the space heater has a built-in thermostat and it's currently set 74 degrees so it will kick on and off to keep the room 74 now that says 74 and it's currently running my temperature gauge says 76 and my drum water temp gauge is 78 so basically I have to monitor all the water temps, so obviously heat rises, so the water up here is going to be hotter than the water down here. And depending on the weather outside, kind of fluctuates the temp in here. So even though that's set to 74, I knew just by using it after a few weeks that the temperature kind of fluctuates. So 74 keeps the air in the middle rack at 76. And then I use a TDS meter that has a temperature gauge temperature probe and I check each water every couple of days um, until I got it set correctly to where I wanted it and it's working out well um, come summertime I do have a portable AC unit so if I need to cool this room down I can cool it but I this room typically gets freezing in the winter but stays fine in the summer it just it's not insulated very well and I lose a lot of heat because on that side in my other video that's my garage and then this wall and this wall is all exterior so to top off my water barrel I just come over here and I turn on the water the water goes up the pipe through the filters and into the barrel So why that bucket's filling up, this is the app, it's Miros, it's M-E-R-O-S-S, -S. 
and basically you get a smart outlet and I will show you what those are there's one right there plugs in your outlet and then whatever you want to control with your phone you just plug into it that outlet connects to your Wi-Fi and you're done I got a four pack I think it was 35 or 40 bucks um, basically less than 10 bucks an outlet and the way I have it set up is I have the four outlets so one controls it says shrimp lights and basically that's all the lights so if I want to turn the lights off they're on a timer which you set up through the app you just hit the button and they turn off and it's instant there's no waiting and then the same thing I have it set up focus so my 75 gallon lights are on a switch so they're on basically an auto timer the salt pump on my salt tank I have a power head um, it's just I named it salt pump so that kicks on once an hour just for a few minutes to help give some extra basically current through the tank and then there's the sump pump so right now I just manually drain it you can see the water level is getting up there so I just press the button the pump kicked on the water is running through the discharge tube to the drain pipe by the washer and the water level is going down so I still I'm still involved with the water changes because I have to be here to be able to turn the water flow on and drain the sump pump then once it's empty I just turn the pump off and then just continue on if I do one tank out of time it's kind of nice because this is a five gallon bucket so on my 20 gallons if I do one at a time and this fills up I know I did 25% water change and then obviously if I have a 10 gallon tank on the top rack one at a time if I fill this bucket that's a 50% water change so typically I'll do two of these at once and let that bucket fill up and then do the 20 gallons. So my goal for the tank room, the fish room, is to eventually have another rack system going further down and I kind of want to do 20 longs um, instead of being lengthwise like how I have my current rack set up I want them on their basically their sides so you're looking down the length of the tank. Um, I like to do 20 longs and do as many as I can fit on maybe a 10 foot length and do two or if not three more rows high. I also need to get my sump pump system on automatic activation. So I'm either going to use a sump pump float switch like you would have in a basement of a house or I'm going to use just regular float switches. The only problem with the float switches is that it'll kick the pump on but as soon as that little float switch goes down, it'll kick it off. So that bucket would always have quite a bit of water in it. So I had to run like a dual switch to where there's a minimum and a maximum level system set up. The sump pump switch would be the easiest. And so I'm just trying to find one that's not overly huge that's made to be in a sump well that will fit my five gallon bucket. Because I really need that fully automatic with no user input from me. So that way, if any of my drip line spring a leak somehow and it starts dumping water into that bucket and I'm not home that it will start emptying it on its own the nice thing about having that water leak detector is that it goes to my phone so even if I'm not home and it det detects a water leak I can use my smart switch app and activate the sump pump right away so that way if it is leaking into that bucket and the buckets overflowing I can at least kick it on and I know it takes it um, at least 10 minutes to fill up so I can basically cycle that pump on for 60 seconds wait 10 minutes cycle it on for 60 seconds because it takes about 60 seconds to drain that bucket completely empty if it's got maximum water flow coming into it so I've already did that testing so that way I know so I'm prepared for that if I'm not home I can just cycle the pump on 60 seconds the, the bucket will be empty turn it off so that way I'm not burning up the pump. Um, I'm trying to run fail safes for most things like the plumbing I've done I put a lot of unions in so that way I can take off 
um, piping and sections if I need to, if I want to redesign it down the road. I stubbed out all the pipe ends, so that way if I make a second rack, I can tie into my drum system, so that way I have water to that rack, so I don't have to run a second drum. Um, if I have a ton of tanks, a 55 gallon drum that's not full, um, that water is probably only going to be good for one water change a day. So with the whole house system, once I'm confident that it's good, I will switch to the irrigation electronic valves that everybody uses for their full automatic water change systems. Use one of those just off of the whole house filter system I installed. And then that way it's fully automatic, it kicks on, that valve opens, water goes through the filters, removes the chlorine, and will change each tank on its own. And then virtually I can eliminate the drum system. The drum system I have, I would say probably around $100 in it. The drum was 10 bucks, but all the piping added up, like you, you don't realize fittings um, what I can recommend is a first of all you should always have a PVC cutter tool I said it before in my videos buy yourself one it just if you're using a hacksaw to cut pipe stop get yourself a PVC cutter you can cut a pipe in seconds and it's clean it's just it'll save so much headache just buy one <laughs> um, but the fittings add up so the primer I've done there's probably a hundred joints and I have a ton of the primer left. The cement, I did use a full bottle of that because it kind of jellies up and becomes unusable if you keep opening and closing the bottle a lot. Um, so I did buy a second bottle of cement, which I haven't gotten into yet, but if I need to do any more plumbing, I will need to use the new bottle. Um, the lighting, you know, I, I started doing that the hard wire with the LED grow floodlight bulbs. Um, I decided against that. And I'm just going to use the four foot light. It's an Aqua Neat from eBay. I saw that on LR Brett's channel. He really liked them and said he hasn't had you know any issues with them. My current lights or aquarium lights are um, Nye Crew. I haven't had any issues with them. It's just that that four section um, Aqua Neat light was $28 I think for four sections so that's really cheap and that was with free shipping off eBay from Wisconsin and I'm happy with how everything's going the only thing I need to get done like I said is that sump pump with the automatic switch so that's on my priority list to do and I need to run once that's done we'll run the hard piping for the discharge drain line you know over to my washer drain um, so that way I don't have that flexible tube on the floor just so clean it up a bit and right now I'm swapping between my drain line for the fish tanks and my drain line for my washer luckily I don't have to do clothing or you know any laundry often so I just leave it out and I leave my drain line in for the fish tanks and then I swap them when I need to do laundry so first recap float switch for the sump pump Second will be hard discharge line to the drain. And then third, I need to finish cleaning out this storage room. I want to get everything out of here so that way I can continue building my fish racks and get more tanks. I do have a 29 gallon tank inside that's uh, empty right now that I do want to get set up for some shell dwellers. So that's my next project I really want to get into is having shell dwellers. Um, I do plan on breeding those. Um, from what I understand, they're actually super easy to breed. You basically let them go with the correct shells in the bottom and they do their thing. Um, the dwarf pea puffers are just something I thought are pretty cool and they are my solution to the pest snails. So instead of trying to get rid of the pest snails out of the, t the shrimp tank, I'm just going to use my aquascaping tweezers pull out some of the pest snails once they're big enough and drop them into the Indian puffer tank and they love munching on those. So I'm basically using what is a pest to my advantage and using it as a food source for my pea puffers. The nearite snails, I like to do a breeding project with them, introducing them to salt water or at least brackish water, see if I can get them to breed, and then um, convert them back to fresh water to sell them. So I'll record that once I understand if I can actually do it or not. 
the red cherry shrimp. My whole goal for them is to breed them and sell them to friends. Um, they are roughly, I believe, six or seven dollars from my local fish store. Uh, you know, if I can get some decent ones going, I'm using the Flip Aquatics line, and they so far have colored up really well. And once they breed out, you know, maybe I'll sell them to friends for like three bucks or something just to get into breeding shrimp. I think it's kind of cool. And the tequila sunrise guppies. My whole plan for that is to breed to sell. I start off with one pair and they look fantastic. They actually look way better than what the website I bought them from like, depicted them as. They look fantastic. And I'm pretty sure the female is pregnant. They are live bears. Um, her stomach has really gained some mass over the last few days. So I'm going to keep my eye on them. And if I have to, I'll net out the fry to prevent them from eating. But I think that tank's got enough coverage. And I feed them well enough that they'll be fine. Um, they are on um, flake food and live brine shrimp. I breed not breed but I hatch brine shrimp every day and the guppies get it the dwarf pea puffers get it and I also drop some into my salt tank the watchman goby and the clownfish love the brine shrimp so I'm feeding three different tanks with the brine shrimp so that's a hatch every day thing it's super easy it takes like two minutes I do it when I get home from work I feed the tanks and then I start a new batch of brine shrimp to hatch. So it's just a routine I get into. It's not a big deal right now. And it's just a homemade hatchery setup. I do have a 10 gallon grow up tank. Um, I'll show you here in a minute when I go back into the main house. For the brine shrimp, I'm trying to grow them out so that way I can feed them to maybe my cichlids or the uh, convicts because I know that they like the freeze-dried shrimp and the ghost shrimp they're not very hardy yet because they are a feeder shrimp from the local fish store um, so whenever I buy like 20 at a time I usually lose about half of them within a few days and as soon as I lose them I drop them into my cichlid tank and they gobble them right up so I'm not wasting anything um, my red cherries I started with 25 I think and I, I only have lost two um, and they were both the first night so you know I'm happy with that and those as soon as they died I put them in the cyclic tank they ate them right up so I'm not wasting anything um, the water as far as wasting my discharge line that's going to the drain I had thought about discharging it outside this is the exterior wall to a 275 gallon IBC tote and then repurposing that for the flower garden or the lawn um, in the summer um, because if you're changing 55 gallons of water a day you know it's just going straight into a drain and being that I could just run the line right outside here and have a tote on the outside for storage or even have it literally just dump into the yard at least I'm doing something with it instead of going into the sewer so that might be a project for the summer um, we'll see and I think that's about it I'll uh, I'll end this with a little video of the brine shrimp grow out tank I'm trying to do and um, I'll try to make another video shortly and hopefully I'll have shell dweller soon so stay tuned thanks sorry about the mess but this is the brine shrimp area it's just an air pump that I had spare into the line this tea it's just an extra tea I had from the fish room. And I'm just using that basically to hold this bottle upright. It's just laid against the tank. The airline comes in and goes into the bottom of the bottle. There's nothing fancy. This is just an office lamp I had. It's an LED light. It's not even putting off you know, any heat. But it's just there to um, help motivate them, I guess. They are attracted to light. Um, this group is ready to go to feed the puffers and the guppies and also the salt water tank. I originally started off with some sponge filters. There's two in there. Sorry that there's um, old egg shells. It just needs cleaned out. So basically what I do is I hatch them daily. I feed the tanks and then what's left over I just dump into this 10 gallon tank. And I just started that this week 
and there's already two large um, brine shrimp in there, like full adult size. They must have been in there from my original batch that I hatched out like a month ago. Um, but I just started reusing this water and um, hoping I get them grown out bigger so I can feed other fish with them. I don't know if you'll be able to see the adults. There's one. It's gonna be hard to focus. You can kind of see them swimming. And then all the new stuff that's hatched is always by the light, which is also hard to see with this, but you can see them swimming in there. And then I originally started feeding them what do we have here? This is going to be the New Life Spectrum Grow. It's a fry starter. It's a real fine powder. And then um, I do that one once a day. And then this one every other day. This is just spirulina powder. Um, I got it in a big bag and I put it in this little jar just for ease of use. And I just do a little pinch of that every other day. And we're hopefully... Hopefully going to see these grow out bigger so I can feed more fish with them. So that's all. And until the next update, thank you. Um, please hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the bell icon to get notifications when I upload my next video. Thank you guys.